Hello, my name is Sky, and this is a, I guess, a message of an idea for Creative Assembly for their next uh, Total War game. Now, what I've noticed be in previous iterations is that you have this element where uh, you have your small provinces, your small areas where you operate, and uh, so the small short game is you need to conquer the, your neighbors to build up your strength, and then once you've done that, then you can expand outwards from there. Uh, the problem is that if all the provinces are small, you know, or if they're large, you know, depending on what part of the map you're at, it radically changes and affects the gameplay. And it also means that as you get bigger and bigger, you have to micromanage uh, the smaller provinces, which aren't really that important in the grander scheme of things. And so the player ends up getting stuck in that, you know, here's where I started, I conquer and conquer, but I still have to maintain and operate back here. Um, and it's almost like, is there some way I can make it easier, that I can just have one larger area that I could deal with and not have to worry about smaller areas? So based on that, um, I've come to the conclusion that create a county system uh, or where you divide the whole world map into counties and then as each faction grows it can start uh, putting the counties together to create states. Uh, so the way I was envisioning it was uh, if your guy starts in this little county down here uh, and the other thing is that put the port city right on the coastline don't have the separate uh, port. You know, do have the the graphic and the uh, you know the symbol of the port extending you know from the city into the water, because uh, that way it just you know makes uh, laying siege to a city uh, more realistic. And also, I would be very fascinated in seeing if you could incorporate um, attacking a city or taking you know from the sea. Uh, with an amphibious force, but that's uh, probably something a little bit more complicated <laughs> than uh, what can be done. But then again, hey, why not? Uh, so other elements that I've thought about, and I was curious how you can employ, would be uh, populations, different populations on the world map. So I wanted to present a little scenario here and to try to you know, capture some of those ideas. Uh, so if you, the player, start out here, with the ocean down here and uh, a river going up, uh, forested area, mountains, uh, places where you can cross, and then uh, these would be uh, rebel factions. Uh, so that way you can have empty pieces of land where nobody's living and it's undeveloped. Once you move in there, it's up to the player to decide, do I want to waste my resources in developing this land, or do I want to incorporate uh, a small county into a larger province, and that way uh, the management for that county is given to one location, which will oversee all uh, the counties together. And so then I can give uh, some simple instructions such as, okay, build roads, and, uh, well, so it would go like this. If I start out here and I proceed to start adding provinces or counties to my land and you know just expand out, sending my troops out and marching, you know, walking over the land. And that's kind of a interesting question, like, all right, so how do you take ownership then? Um, for that, I kinda wanna say if you go to a location that uh more or less marks the center, you know, or any piece of land that you walk over, it's ostensibly under your jurisdiction, or you know, you claim it under your province, um, and then it's up to you to decide. Okay, uh, so I've quickly conquered the five uh, counties adjacent to where I started. Now, rather than uh, put the resources into developing each county, I say, okay, I now create a province out of this block. And uh, that's going to open up a new 
series of uh, building options in this city. Uh, because now this city, instead of being a, a county seat, it's now a provincial capital. So uh, based on that, if I give it a, you know, or if I give this provincial capital certain instructions, like say, okay, uh, rather than build a road, build a road network. So what does that mean? Well, uh, within a turn, roads start being built. Oops, uh, I shouldn't have done that, but well. And also, that would be impossibly, hopefully, add a bridge where there was no crossing beforehand. So that's when we get around that. Uh, then I can say, okay, now build an economic uh, whatever that will build up the economy, build a naval, you know. And so that way, uh, the other you know, aspect of that is that there would be certain resources uh, available in these different counties. And so by creating a province, those resources are now channeled into the, pro you know, the provincial capital. Uh, so that increases the amount of funding that this one province makes rather than the individual incomes that each little county would make, or vice versa. So that's up to the player to decide, okay, do I want to uh, keep this county isolated and have it operate on its own because uh, I want to you know, exploit some of the resources in there, or do I want it to be part of the larger province and uh, its development will be tied into the rest of the development. So they can give the AI uh, that authority. Now, so two other little things here you'll see is um, so the rebel provinces and in my or the rebel factions. So in my opinion, the way you can do that is um, to be a rebel faction. One of two things: it can either be mobile, or it could be seated uh, and have a location. Now, on top of that, I am thinking, if it's possible, try to give each rebel uh, seated faction a uh, something unique about it. And the advantage of that, or like something unique about it, and also have some sort of resource that it's sitting on top of. So this rebel faction is up in the mountains. It's isolated by a forest and it has water. Uh, but say that uh, maybe it has access to some resource in the mountain or use, um, or there's pastoral land so it can grow a uh, wool there um, and with the water and the wood and you know, its other resources. And the same with this uh, rebel faction down here that since it's on the ocean it has access to the water. Uh, possibly, you know, pirate ships, uh, who knows what. The, and this land was, you know, could be where it uh, grows food. Um, so, what I'm of the opinion of is you could send out a diplomat and uh, actually just proceed to start winning over this faction's uh, affinity towards you, make them like you more. So you could say, uh, hey, you know, guys, how about we build a road that connects us to so we can trade? And that rebel faction would be like, okay, sure. And then uh, I can give them money. I can say, hey, I'll marry one of my generals. Uh, or, like, I'll marry some offspring to one of your offspring. Um, let's go. Let's do a trade agreement. Let's do this or that. Uh, and part of the idea is that the more resources you have on hand, the more... Uh, options that are available to you and also since we're talking about populations res more resources means larger population where does larger population come in come into uh, play when you want to expand a city uh, but it's also in terms of unit size the types of units you choose or that uh, are available to you based on whatever you decide so that's something that you can have like a historical and then a custom campaign historical means that you would kind of go, you would try to go in the direction of your historical counterpart. So in the case of Rome, uh, you know, what the Romans did was they would conquer an enemy and then incorporate what those enemies had into their own uh, military machine. 